The lesson this morning is uh, about Josiah renewing the covenant. And um, in a sort of unusual way, I can relate a part, at least uh, in part, uh, to the text of today's lesson personally. Um, Josiah made a, an awesome discovery, and I can personally feel the excitement, excitement that Hilkiah and, and Shaphan must have felt when they discovered a forgotten scroll, the last book of the law which had been given to Moses. Now, I would imagine that no one can guess what I have in this bag. No, that wasn't it. No, no. Did you look? No, but I could tell by the way he was drunk and lifted it up. I had candy that I was going to give to whoever guessed. I thought I was going to have to eat that candy during church. Next, next time you do that, don't be Dennis, don't grunt. <laughs> Okay, the, yes, I do. I have a rock in this bag, and I'm going to show it to you. I, <laughs> okay, this is a rock, and it's a heavy rock. I used to do a vocational archaeology, and some years ago I found this rock. And uh, I was really excited because this rock is sort of like a crude book. Um, or it would have been to the Native American that crafted this piece. If you examine the rock, you'll notice that in the surface, there are symbols etched into the stone. It's not cooperating. Unfortunately, though, we'll never know what these images meant to the man that created it. The Aborigines that lived in this part of Michigan didn't have a system of writing that, like we do with symbols and uh, you know, that would convey the message to another person. It was personal to them. Nonetheless, the message was significant enough that this man took his time and his energy to etch into, it, into the stone something that was of a deep meaning to him. Okay. okay, it was also used as a hammering stone, and he must have been a very strong guy. <laughs> but when I made this discovery, I was very excited. And because pictograph or picture writing is fairly rare in Michigan, there are some examples of it like this, but it's fairly rare. So I took it and I showed the stone to everybody that I thought would have an interest in it. Because here's a sort of written document that goes back some 1,500 years, um, judging by the pottery that I've you know, found along with it. But it has no meaning. It's interesting, but it has no meaning. Hilkiah knew, he had found, knew what he had found and how precious it was and how significant it was. And I'm sure he was excited. What has this rock got to do with the lesson today? It's an example of a rare document hidden away, waiting to be found. And it's also connected because truly it was a, one of Noah's wandering descendants that, you know, that crafted it. But I just thought it was interesting because it's exciting to find something like that. But it's even more exciting to find the, the Word of God. If you would, please turn with me to 2 Chronicles 34.15. And our text today is uh, a little bit chopped up. So we'll look at 1st, 2nd Chronicles 34.15. And the word of God says, And Hilkiah answered and said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan. <clears throat> We're going to be down a little bit more than that. And Shaphan carried the book to the king and brought the king word back again, saying, All that was committed to, the, to thy servants, they, they do it. And they have gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and to the hand of the workmen. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of, of the law, he rent his clothes. And now we're going to skip down to verses 25 through 27, <clears throat> which read, 
because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto, unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Judah, who sent you, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall ye say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel concerning the words which thou hast heard. Because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou hear, heardest his words against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, and humblest thyself before me, and didst rend thy, thy clothes, and weep before me, I have, I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord. And stay there. Because we're going to skip down to verse 29 now. Which says, then, then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. And lastly, we'll read verses 31 through 33. And the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant which are written in the book, this book. And he caused all that were present in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries and that pertained to the children of Israel and made all that were present in Israel to serve even to serve the Lord their God. And all his days they departed not from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. So the lesson today is broken down into three parts, but the first letter of each part's not the same. <laughs> so I'm kind of weird. I can't do that. <laughs> so the first part is is the book. We still we see that Hilkiah made a most wonderful and awesome discovery, a discovery which wrought an awesome change in the land of Judah. Josiah was king, and he had become king when he was only eight years old. <clears throat> And when he was 16 years old, he had a spiritual awakening that turned his heart towards God. Josiah ordered a purging of Judah and Jerusalem, which led to a spiritual cleansing of the land. Every semblance of idolatry and false worship was destroyed. <clears throat> Josiah personally saw to this task. I'm not trying, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not trying to demean any of our leaders today. But as I was preparing this lesson, I began to wonder what would happen if we had such a godly leader in our country today. Perhaps there's hope on the horizon. Um, maybe Obama or Hillary or maybe a teaming of them both. <laughs> we can only hope not. <laughs> That's later in the lesson. Don't get ahead of me, Bruce. <laughs> I might as well stop. You just no. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. She guessed, and he. <laughs> Our lives, though, would be incredibly different than they are now. There basically wouldn't be anything on television, including most Christian programming that's on TV. Hollywood might as well slide into the ocean. Infidels would be driven from our land. There would be no more Islams, Islam in America. That means Obama would leave. <laughs> There'd be no more. Buddhism, there'd be no more Hare Krishnas, and that'd be phenomenal. But at any rate, um, another six years would pass before Josiah uh, <coughs> ordered a major repair of the temple, <clears throat> uh, which he had already, you know, had purged during the uh, <laughs> during the during the cleansing. Money was collected from all over the land and given to those that were in charge of the job of repairing the temple. And they in turn paid those who were to do the actual work. At the time the money was being delivered, Hilkiah was apparently working alone in the temple. And while he was working there, he made his discovery. And that was of a, of a scroll containing the laws that had been given to Moses. Don't you find it rather amazing that a book such as this had been lost? I mean, I can understand this old rock being lost in the ground and nobody <coughs> noticing it. But the scroll that contained the law was lost. 
for a long time had been unfamiliar to the people of Judah. And that gives us an indication of how far astray these people had gone. How far they, they had gone in turning away from God. The book had ended up stored amongst junk and debris. I guess that it's not difficult to believe, though, when we begin to realize in our, you know, in our own day that Bibles are sitting on shelves and gathering dust. Of, you know, Bibles that had great importance, great significance to people's lives, and their lives maybe took a different direction, and now they, the Bible just lays there, gathering dust, stored on a shelf with things that aren't important, just waiting, waiting, forgotten. Hilkiah right away reported, though, his find to Shaphan the scribe. It is most amazing that the book had been unseen right there in the temple. Can you imagine walking into our church and not seeing a copy of God's word? Or walking into our church and not seeing a copy of God's word and not have it bother us? It's most amazing that the book had been unseen right there in the temple. Finally, though, it was to become the focus of attention, but Hilkiah and Shaphan did recognize the importance of the book. When Shaphan reported to King Josiah on the progress of the work, he told the king of the book that Hilkiah had found. <clears throat> In 2 Kings 22.10, we read, And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And surely it was an emotional time, um, for King Josiah as he sat and listened to the words of the law of Moses. The clarity of the warnings that God had given, him, had given must have particularly struck him. It must have caused fear in Josiah as his realized, realization of the extent of Judah's departure from God came glaringly into focus for him. Obviously, God's commandments had not been followed. As he heard Deuteronomy 17, 18 through 19, he realized God had every reason to judge his people. Let's turn to uh, Deuteronomy 17, 18, and 19 for just a moment. And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book, out of that which is before the priests, the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that we may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of, the, of this law and these statutes, to do them. <clears throat> This led to a sense of deep contrition in Josiah. His reaction was dramatic. As he heard the contents of the scroll, he became very distraught. What hope was there? It, it, clearly, the kingdom had not been living by this book. And Josiah was so upset, he jumped up and he tore his clothes. And at that time, he issued an order. Tearing his clothes was a sign of Josiah's deep mourning and grief over what he had heard, what he had read, heard read from the scrolls, and his realization that his people had not been living, had not been living accord to, according to the laws that God had given to Moses. The second part is the message. The command Josiah issued was given to five of his trusted friends. In verse 20, he had told them, Go inquire of the Lord for me, and for them that are left in Israel and in, Judea, or in Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out upon us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do after all that is written in this book. So the group of five, led by Hilkiah, went to the prophetess Huldah, you have to wonder if the scroll found in the temple was the only one left in existence. If so, is it not amazing how God protected and preserved his word and brought it down to us today? It gives a sense of awe, of awe as to how it came safely preserved to us. 
If it was the only surviving copy, the probable explanation is that all the copies had been destroyed during the reigns of Manasseh, Manasseh and Ammon. In the days of their reign as kings, the worship of Je Jehovah had been completely abolished, with perhaps a few exceptions of individuals that uh, were scattered throughout the land who still trusted in, in God and wanted to follow his word. It took a while for Josiah to reestablish the worship of God, for it was now the 18th year of his reign. Huldah's response quickly confirmed that Josiah's fears were indeed well-founded. Through her, the Lord confirmed that he was going to bring calamity upon the land of Israel. Josiah had a sensitivity, though, regarding God's word, and this enabled him to understand the, way of, the ways of God, <clears throat> the way of God towards his people. His desire to get God's uh, people back on track and his openness to God's word were commendable. It's a wonderful truth that God is gracious and merciful and, e and even eager to forgive and restore his own that truly repent. It would seem this has always been his way of working. It's his way of working yet today. When you and I truly repent, then we're forgiven, restored. But not through anything that we can really do to earn that. But rather, we're forgiven by the precious atoning blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that was shed for us. Amen. Amen. It's his way of working yet today. When you and uh, I just did that, I had a new secretary type out my notes, and part of them are spaced a line and a half, part of them are not spaced at all. <laughs> not naming any names, Davey. <laughs> I appreciated you doing it, though. <laughs> okay. The Lord had a message directed to the king personally. Because of Josiah's tender heart and humble spirit, God had heard him. God was aware of everything Josiah, Josiah had done and said, including that he had torn his robe and that he had wept. He wept over the situation he heard when he heard what God was going to do to the land and his people. Two words in 2 Chronicles 34:27 explain exactly what Josiah felt and did. To be tender, to be tender <clears throat> because of Josiah's tender heart and humble spirit, God had heard him. God was aware of everything Josiah had done and said, include, <clears throat> including that he had torn his robe and, and wept over the situation when he heard that God, what God was going to do to the land and to the people. <clears throat> Two words in 2 Chronicles 34.27 explain exactly what Josiah felt and did. To be tender means to be yielding and sensitive. The, uh, this is the opposite of a heart that is unaffected and cynical towards the realization of sin and injustice. That's the heart of the world. <clears throat> King Josiah didn't have that kind of heart. To be humble means to be willing to subject oneself without conditions. Had Josiah had a hardened heart, he would never have responded in humility. The conclusion of Huldah's message was that calam the calamity destined for Judah would not take place until after Josiah's death. Um, if you're still at Chronicles, uh, 2 Chronicles 34, we're going to read verse 28. Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place and upon the inhabitants of the same. So, so they brought the king word again. This should serve as a reminder to us that God values and also honors tender attitudes of humility in his people. And tender attitudes of humility is something that I've seen consistently in everybody in this church. The third part of the lesson is the return. In Deuteronomy 31, 12, 13, we read of the Feast of the Tabernacles, which was done every seven years. 
And I'd like us to turn there, please. Deuteronomy 31, 12 through 13. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children, which have not known anything, may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as you live in the land, whether ye go over Jordan to possess it. I didn't read it all, did I? I'm sorry. Somebody got my reference wrong, I think. Because <laughs> there's more. No, there's not. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> I'm human. <laughs> King Josiah called for just this sort of gathering. He sent word to all the elders throughout Judah and Jerusalem, along with priests and Levites and many of the common people, to come together. Then, as in 2 Chronicles 34.30, he read aloud to them the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. This reading had a profound effect upon the listeners. As Christians, there's a very serious and sobering lesson right here in, the, in this part. Of scripture. You see, at one point or another, everyone in this, re- in this room has received the truth of God, God's word and found the saving grace of Jesus through that precious word. We love the word and we hold it dear to our hearts and it dwells with, within this temple of flesh that we are. Then sometimes we can get sidetracked by what Satan casts our way and what the world casts our way. Sometimes, sometimes life's problems so erode um, <clears throat> Sorry. Sometimes life's problems will so erode a Christian that those precious words get pushed to the back. Just as the book of the law of Moses was shoved away in the dust and debris in the temple, that sacred word that led to our salvation becomes hidden in this temple, in the debris and junk that Satan throws at us. Still, that word is, is still there waiting to be found so that even backslidden that we can be restored. I, I praise God for being part of a true New Testament church. Amen. Because in a fellowship such as this, there is less and less chance of becoming backslidden. And having less and less chance of having God's holy word shoved into the background. I thank God for the preeminence of his word in his elect. And thank God for the church and the body of Jesus Christ, our Lord. At the conclusion of Josiah's reading, the king stood before everyone and made a public commitment to follow the, the demands of God's word. Few of the kings of Judah had made such a commitment as Josiah did. David and Hezekiah... Um, did, and they stood head and shoulders above other kings uh, of Judah and Israel. Josiah was dedicated and determined that nothing found in the newly discovered word would be overlooked. It was his hope that his subjects would follow his commitment and imitate him. Um, we don't, you don't have to turn there, but in, in 2 Kings 23.3, we're told that all the people stood to the covenant, and that sounds as if they willingly participated in what the king had, had commanded. <clears throat> Again in 2 Kings 23, 4 through 20, details are given of the purging of every object related to false worship or to idolatry that were destroyed in the temple. False priests were removed, and even a wooden idol that had been constructed in the temple had been destroyed. As stated in the text today, Josiah took away all, abo- all the abominations out of all of Israel. Everyone present determined to be obedient to God. 
and this dedication of the people lasted throughout the entire reign of Josiah. This was a genuine revival. A powerfully illustrated lesson here con concerns spiritual leadership and how very important that is to each and every one of us. We have been blessed with an awesome leader. And that leadership reflects in our dealings with each other and with the community around us. I won't name names because it embarrasses him. But by the way, it's his birthday today and his older brother Tom's. <laughs> Seven minutes, right? Seven minutes. <laughs> We've talked about the wisdom before that those seven minutes bring. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Each of us has an awesome responsibility in the, in the influence that we have through Jesus Christ in the community around us. And the leadership that we receive here gives us the direction that we need to be able to go to the people around us. When, Scott, when God's word... Oh no... When God's word is discovered and presented to a righteous leader, it can then be presented to his people to guide their lives. There are about 10 sentences left. I can go real, real, real. <laughs> or, we can, or we can visit afterwards. When God's word is discovered and presented to a righteous leader, it can then be presented to his people to guide their lives. And this happens to you and I as we hear the truth of God's word preached here every week. As we accept his word and are obedient to it, we, are open, we open our lives to a multitude of blessings. No matter how strong any single one of us considers ourselves, we must always be conscious of the place God's word holds in our lives and strive as, to keep it dusted off this temple so it never becomes hidden away and always shines brightly through us to the unsaved world around us. We have 20 minutes. <laughs> Be sure you check out the rock that I'm going to put on the back counter back there. <laughs> Be sure to wish Tom and Pastor a happy birthday. I think everybody already has. And oh, yes, an important lesson that we learned on Easter Sunday is he is risen. He is risen. <laughs> David, would you please close with prayer?